Good evening, everyone. I'm John Kasich, along with Dr. Tom Sutton of Baldwin Wallace. Continuing a tradition we started a dozen years ago back in 2006, been, yes. bringing you these election night results. And what an exciting night. It is a date we circled on our calendar back on November 8th in 2016. Over the course of the last two years, we have heard your voices. The question was, would we see your voice, votes? And we're seeing them tonight, we especially are. when you see turnout of over 50% here in Cuyahoga County. This turnout is really unusual. In a midterm election, typically we'd see anywhere from 40 to 45 percent. We saw somewhere in that range in 2014. 2010, we saw it a little higher, more competitive races. This is approaching the turnout we'd see in a presidential race even two years ago. And a fascinating thing in those turnout numbers is the fact that when you look at the vo votes by party, we're talking about 85 percent of Republicans voted, 85 percent of Democrats voted. The nonpartisans, the biggest voting bloc, is only 30 percent. So we right. saw a lot of energy yes. among the parties. Yeah, I think this is really, you've got people that are energized on the Republican side because they want to defend what they've gotten. They got a Republican Congress. They got a Republican president. They like the tax cuts. Many of them are interested in the issue of immigration, the economy. They want to save that. They want to keep that going. On the Democratic side, a lot of reaction against Donald Trump and about some of the particular issues. One of the biggest being, we know from the polling, health care. Ohio did some exit polling. ABC did some exit polling here in Ohio. Donald Trump, 49% appro job approval rating mm -hmm. on the part. This is higher than what we have seen Absolutely. in Ohio polls. Right. And so I think this also explains why during the campaigns we saw a very interesting absence of Trump's name on both sides. Whether it was the Senate race, it was the governor's race during the debates. We saw a lot of talk about the issues and about national policies, but his name really didn't come up because... He has ardent supporters and he has ardent people who are against him. And really, you touch him at your own risk. And clearly that's happening tonight when it comes to these results. Well, one of the things we're seeing with our early vote, and again, it's about a third of the vote overall coming in, is the fact that Sherrod Brown off to a strong lead. In fact, the Associated Press has indeed called the race for Sherrod Brown. I want to go to Amanda Van Allen, who is standing by at Brown headquarters with a look at the, the, the mood there this evening. Amanda. Well, crowds are finally starting to file in here, and there is a big excitement in the air because just moments ago, ABC News has projected that Sherrod Brown is the winner, and you guys missed it, but people were erupting. The crowds were very excited to see that Sherrod Brown is keeping his Senate seat, and folks are talking about the blue wave, getting themselves excited about the rest of the potential results for this evening. Now, we don't know when, but later tonight, we will hear from the potential winner, Sherrod Brown. Brown, who outspent his opponent by millions to keep the Senate seat he's held for over a decade. If Brown, the Demo if he keeps Democratic control, which he has, um, then it is still possible that the Democrats will keep control of the Senate, will win control of the Senate, rather. Then we have the Democratic Richard Cordray, who is neck and neck with current Attorney General Mike DeWine for the Ohio governor spot. He'll be here tonight to speak as well, and that election is expected to be close. Now, according to ABC News preliminary exit polls, conservatives only count for 37 percent of the vote in Ohio, which is down from years past. I got a man event, Alan, at the Sherrod Brown headquarters. Thank you very much. As we take a look at the numbers that she just talked about in the governor's race, uh, Richard Cordray off to a 55,000 vote lead, still very on in this race. But we're seeing this trend in a lot of the early voting, a lot of the Democrats coming out ahead when Republicans tend to gravitate more to the early vote. Right. But it looks like Democrats are catching up. And so seeing this kind of close race, this is a race that pulled within the margin of error 1.2 points throughout the season. Very close race. Both candidates uh, in some ways new to the voters, in Cordray's case, old to the voters in the case of DeWine. Uh, the issues, very different positions on a lot of the issues, particularly in terms of handling the economy, handling issues like abortion, etc. Uh, but I think we see here again that energy showing that close race. And with a million votes cast, the projection at 50 percent means that about three quarters of the vote is still waiting to be counted. And if these trends continue, we might see this one go long before we predict the result. Yeah, I want to see what Cuyahoga County is key when it comes to the uh, election night results for yes. the race for governor. Um, we're talking about a little over about a 60,000 vote difference at this point for Richard Cordray. And that's important to know. When Ted Strickland won the governor seat in 2006, he won with a 226,000 vote majority coming out of Cuyahoga County. And it helps off 
upset what you see in the rest of the state. Right. When he lost the seat back in 2010 to John Kasich, he lost by 102, won the county by 102,000 votes, right. but lost the state by 77,000 votes. So if he had come close to his 2006 numbers, he would have been governor. John Kasich Absolutely. would have would have never had a shot. And I think we're going to see a very similar kind of situation tonight. Uh, Richard Cordray has to do well in the urban counties. He has to do very well in Cuyahoga, in Franklin, in Lucas, in Stark, and certainly in Hamilton. This is a good start at 6631. Uh, the, the working number is anywhere in that mid-60s. If he can hold that in the urban counties, that gives him a very strong position to win statewide. Well, with his finger on the pulse of what's going on at the DeWine headquarters, we want to send things down to Columbus, where Jordan Vandenberg is standing by. Jordan. By taking the whole family. As we've mentioned all night, tonight in this race in particular, it is going to be a very tight race and it has been a very expensive race. And Republicans that are hoping that this race is worth the money and the, this wait will be worth their time. Many of the polls have projected this race between Mike DeWine and Richard Cordray to be razor thin in terms of razor thin margins of error. Many of the polls are falling within the margin of error. In the last check of the Secretary of State's office, Richard Cordray had about a five to six point lead with about a million votes counted so far. When we talked to Mike DeWine earlier today, he seemed at peace with this long and hard-fought campaign, but he also appeared content with whatever the results may be. I'm an optimist. I think we're going to win. Uh, you know, I felt all along that we were going to win, but I've also felt it was going to be a tough race, uh, and I've also felt that it was going to be a very close race. And DeWine went on to say that he and his running mate expected this race to be tight. And when it comes to DeWine's pathway to governor, he must make some gains in the state's population centers, the three C's that uh, Mr. Kosick has been talking about all night, Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Columbus, Tr traditional Democratic strongholds. He must make some gains in those areas and, then of course, dominate in the more Republican-leaning counties. But again, some of the results have come in. Richard Cordray, with about a million votes counted so far, has been a six-point lead. But again, it is expected to be a very long night ahead. Back to you. Very much, Jordan. You know, this is one of the races that a lot of the national pundits have been looking at as an indication of the strength of any blue wave. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have, this is a campaign that's based, devoid of personalities, if you will. This, yes. this really comes down to two qualified candidates. Mm -hmm. And without that personality, it comes down to how people are leaning politically. Right. And so it's the political lean and it's on the issues. But really, I think it is that identification. So what it comes down to is what's your turnout going to be among both uh, partisans on the Republican and the Democratic side, the Democratic being a little more unpredictable because of a lot of new voters, their turnout tends to be more uncertain, but when it comes out, it comes out strong. Republicans much more reliable, they're more easily identifiable, and they can identify with their candidate a lot more easily in Mike DeWine, given that he's been in office for so long. Well, Lake Erie may not have a lot of waves. Ohio itself does. We saw it in 2006. The pendulum went to the Democrats. All but one of the statewide offices, the auditor, went to the Democrats. 2010, it swung back to the Republicans and has been there stuck ever since. So let's take a look at some of the other races right now. In the race for Attorney General, Steve Dettelbach, the Democrat, leading uh, Republican Dave Yost with the early vote. Um, some of the other statewide races in the race for Auditor of State, Democrat again, Zach Space, former congressman, leading Keith Faber, former I Senate am. president. But that's a sizable Eight margin. Eight points. That's a sizable margin. And then we go to the race for Secretary of State, a couple of Summer County area folks, Frank LaRose, trailing uh, Kathleen Clyde at this point. Again, that's a seven-point spread. This is early voting. Again, about a third of the state. And the same holds true. Tre Treasurer of State uh, Much with closer. the Democrat leading at this point. So at this point, those early voters, again, all seem to gravitate right. towards the Democratic Party. And yet by the, identi the identity that we saw in the early vote, uh, it looked like it was very close between those identified Republican and those identified Democrat. So to see these kinds of spreads, this it would be more expected a two or three point spread. Some of the others where we saw the Democrat leading by five, six, seven points in the early vote, uh, that might be the indication that that wave may be coming through Ohio, particularly because with the exception of Yost, all of these down-ticket races are not people who have won statewide or run statewide before. In the race for Congress, we know that the Democrats need 23 seats to take over the House. Here in the state of Ohio, we got 16 seats. 14 of them, or 12 of them, have always been, there are, as they're drawn right now, safe Republican seats. Four are safe Democrat. Trump won all those 12. Hillary Clinton won all those four. We're keeping a close eye on a couple of them yes. here. And I guess, really, let's go down to Ohio 12. This was a special election held to fill Pat Tiberi's seat outside of Columbus, where Troy Baldwin won in August in a very close race. 
and Danny O'Connor off to a strong start in the early voting. And this is one that everyone's keeping an eye on because it was a 1,500 vote spread on the special election in August, went to a recount. Here we're seeing a seven point spread with Danny O'Connor ahead, uh, very good sign for him. Uh, a lot of this has to do with that edge of Franklin, uh, that edge of um, Columbus, which is the suburban area, and then the rest of it largely rural, which is where uh, Balderson is strong. A big part of what this tells us statewide and nationally is the suburban vote. If anything swings one way or the other, the suburban vote is going to be what determines a lot of the outcomes on these races and surprises. And another race we're keeping an eye on is a race for Ohio 16. This is the Jim Renacci seat that he left in order to run for governor first and then run for the U.S. Senate. It is a safe Republican seat in a normal year, but right now in the early vote, we are neck and neck with Anthony Gonzalez, former football player at this point, losing, leading a Susan Moran Palmer. And this one is very interesting because I, I don't think people were giving Susan Moran Palmer the chance to really get this close. Uh, she had a lot of support, a lot of Democrats supporting her first time candidate. But between the fact that this is a, a district that's very tilted towards Republican wins, Jim Renacci having beaten Betty Sutton uh, to get that seat a few years ago, uh, Anthony Gonzalez with the name recognition because of his football days, St. Ignatius, Ohio State, the NFL, uh, both of them running for the first time, which makes this also interesting. But clearly, I think this is one where it may May as much be that Democratic turnout as it is the candidate actually who is running. And Jim Renacci, of course, giving up that safe seat in the Congress to run for governor and now for U.S. Senate after Josh Mandel <coughs> stepped out. And Kevin Barry is standing by at the Renacci headquarters to give us a sense of the mood down there. Kevin. Well, coming into tonight, there's a cautious optimism here in Wadsworth with Congressman Renacci's campaign. But now we are seeing that ABC is calling this for incumbent Senator Sherrod Brown. Uh, when While Congressman Renacci was, uh, I guess, uh, mingling with some of the crowd before, he did say that the message was about Kavanaugh and economy in the last few days. But he didn't mind the pivot to, by, by President Trump to uh, talk about uh, immigration problems in the last few uh, days of the midterm. So these are things that I know the president wants to talk about. They're issues that are included with the economy as well. At the I mentioned there was that hope that the polls were going to be closer. Some of the internal numbers uh, ABC now is calling this race for the incumbent Senator Sherrod Brown. Live in Wadsworth, I'm Kevin Barry, News 5. Kevin, thank you very much. This is indeed is a referendum on Donald Trump. He knew it would be, and he wanted to be the one to make the closing arguments, come to Ohio for three rallies since August. But yesterday's, really, he, he, he wanted to stress the points that he wanted to stress, and Absolutely. that was the immigration. Talked about the economy, mm -hmm. but he, he hit the red button issues. And, and I really, you have to ask the question, in Ohio, does a red button issue like immigration resonate as much as it might in other states? Uh, I would suggest it's not as strong, it's not as important. We did have the raid that happened on that nursery out in Ohio back in August where they scooped up over 100 who were Ill here illegally. But I think for Ohioans in general, again, our polling showed health care, the economy, tax cuts, those were the kinds of issues that people were concerned about. Immigration was an issue and it pulled pretty high, but I think when it comes to these races, uh, I don't think that kind of messaging from President Trump had quite the kind of resonance as it might have might have had in some other parts of the country. And no surprise in the ABC exit polling today, 41% of people rated health care as the number one concern in the state uh, as, with the economy as well. But again, health care with 700,000 people added to the Medicaid rolls with the Medicaid expansion acceptance. Even you have both candidates for governor saying, right. we're going to protect it. Even Mike DeWine, who was initially against it and fought it in court, mm -hmm. said, it's too big of a bell to unring. Right. And particularly because of the issue of pre-existing conditions. Because yeah. that's the one, whether you are in the Medicaid expansion, whether you're not insured, or whether you have your own private insur insurance, that was the law that basically applied across the board to everyone. So even if you were looking at your own private insurance, this was something that was going to affect you as well if the ACA was completely rolled back. Want to take a quick look at the race for the statewide issue. Issue one here, very controversial for some people, but again, it is off to a strong no vote out there this evening. Yes, and I think there what we see is uh, we saw judges, we saw Mike DeWine, a lot of Republicans who are against it. Uh, the money, though, is behind the yes campaign. We had uh, Chan Zuckerberg and others who were in favor of criminal justice reform saying this is going to help people with an opioid problem. It's a huge problem in Ohio, but it's also an issue of crime. And when it comes to crime issues, we tend to be a little more conservative when it comes to voting. The other issue is confusion. This was a complicated ballot measure, and we have a very strong history of if we don't understand what we're looking at in a ballot issue, we vote no.
Homa Bash has been monitoring this issue for us. And Homa, you've seen the passions of the people involved in, uh, in many sides and many angles of this issue. We really have. This issue has been driving debate on criminal justice reform in our state for the last few months. And as you mentioned, right now we are pulling at a 60 percent no vote and 40 percent in favor. Now, if it passes, which it's not looking likely, issue one would have meant reducing penalties and punishments for low level drug offenses like using or possessing. They would go from fourth and fifth degree felonies to misdemeanors, which means local jail time versus state prison time. Supporters said it would reduce overcrowding in Ohio prisons. It would have prioritized rehabilitation over incarceration. Opponents say it would make the drug problem even worse by tying judges' hands when it comes to punishment for drug crimes. Issue one did not apply to drug traffickers or violent offenders. Experts and judges, like you mentioned, telling me all night that this would have been a close race. But again, with those very early results, showing 60% voting no on issue one and 40% in support. Homa Bash, News 5. John. All right, thank you very much, Homa. Again, taking a look at the governor's race, this is going to be the key one right now. Only about uh, 60,000 votes separating the two. But again, Richard Cordray off to that strong early lead. Mm -hmm. When do we normally see... What, we're, the, 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 we talked about the three seats, Cuyahoga, uh, Columbus, and Cincinnati. Cincinnati. When, when do we see those? Uh, do they tend to come in early or later or... We tend to see Hamilton come in fairly early. Columbus is kind of in the middle, and Cuyahoga tends to come in towards the end. Um, and I think we may see that come in ever, even later tonight because of the high voter turnout. Uh, it sounds like elections went smoothly today. We didn't have any real backups. We heard about a lot of lines. But there is a process, and sometimes that process is a bit slow when it comes to those releases. Then you have the releases coming out of the urban counties. So it wouldn't be surprising if we don't see these numbers going back and forth in the next few hours before we actually get a final result. Yeah, I think it's important to note in Cuyahoga County where early voting you know, accounts for about 40% of the vote that in Republican suburbs like Pepper Pike, we saw turnout at around 30%. Early voting in Cleveland itself was only eight and a half percent. Right. So those are the numbers they're going to break late and break late. We assume for the Democrats as traditionally that has right. been the case. And I think that's that's and that's really the key to Cordray holding that lead, Cordray and Sutton, um, because I think we're going to see strong voting. The projections are that in most of Ohio, we're going to see upwards of 50, 52, 53 percent turnout. And if that turnout holds in all of the rural areas, that gives the strength over to DeWine and Houston and their ticket. Well, it is 817 right now, and traditionally, that means we're going to have some waiting to do in order to see the rest of the numbers begin to trickle in the way it is done. The, the numbers are recorded on those little uh, cards at your voting place. They are then brought together and then tallied from there. There's no direct link from your voting place to the boards of elections, so it takes time for them to come in so we see the results begin to trickle. But this is the early start. This gives us a good indication of where we are, Democrats at least, in the early voting leading in the race for governor. Sheriff Brown called by ABC in the race for U.S. Senate. And they're also leading in the row offices here in Ohio. We will continue to monitor the situation here on News 5 and bring you the latest as it happens. Thanks for joining us.